Very nice. Um, nice to meet Charlie. Uh, She's welcome anytime. Good Charlie. evening. Welcome to the April 2nd regular town council meeting. Um, may I have Councillor Breton please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Breton? Here. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Latina may be late. Councillor Lesser? Here. Councillor Rell? Here. Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Morin Belch? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Our first order of business tonight is a proclamation for National Health Week, April 2nd through the 6th. And I believe we have members of the Central Connecticut Health District here tonight. Okay, if you'd come on up. I'll meet you at the podium. Okay, um, our first proclamation, whereas the American Public Health Association has proclaimed April 2nd through the 8th as National Public Health Week, and whereas this year's theme is Healthiest Nation 2030, Changing Our Future Together, and focuses on rallying around the goal of making the United States the healthiest nation in one generation by 2013, 2030, and for over 20 years, the annual celebration of National Public Health Week reminds us of the fundamental role that our town and state departments play every day in the health of our communities. And whereas the town of Wethersfield, together with its neighboring towns of Berlin, Newington, and Rocky Hill, receive quality public health service through its regional health department, the Central Connecticut Health District, now in its 22nd year of awareness in service to our community. Now, therefore, I, Amy Morin Bello, Mayor of the Town of Wethersfield, on behalf of the Town Council, do hereby proclaim April 2nd to April 8th, 2018, National Public Health Week in Wethersfield, Connecticut, and encourage all our citizens to join in and acknowledge the critical role of public health in helping individuals and communities achieve and maintain good health. In witness whereof, by the authority vested in me as mayor, I hereunto set my hand and seal of the town of Wethersfield to be affixed the second day of April, 2018. Thank you. Our next proclamation is in recognition day of national service. Do we have members of the audience here? So whereas service to others is a hallmark of the American character and central to how we meet our challenges, and whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants address the most pressing challenges facing our communities, from educating students for jobs of the 21st century, to fighting the opiate epidemic, to responding to natural disasters, to supporting veterans and military families. And whereas Wethersfield is a very strong volunteer community, not only our volunteer fire department, which is the oldest continuing department in New England, and our volunteer ambulance um, association, but also our members on boards and commissions. And whereas national service creates more sustainable, resilient communities, providing education, career skills, and leadership abilities for those who serve. And whereas national service represents a unique public-private partnership that invests in community solutions and leverages non-federal resources to strengthen community impact and increase the return on taxpayer dollars. And whereas Wethersfield service participants demonstrate commitment, dedication, and patriotism by making an intensive commitment to helping which remains with them in their future endeavors. And whereas the Corporation for National and Community Service 
shares a priority with county officials and mayors nationwide to engage citizens, improve lives, strengthen communities, and foster civic engagement. Now, therefore, I, Amy Morin Bello, mayor of the town of Wethersfield, do hereby proclaim April 3rd, 2018, as National Service Recognition Day and encourage residents to recognize the positive impact they have, not just in Wethersfield, but Connecticut, <coughs> and also by participating with others in national service in our country to thank those who serve and to find ways to give back to their communities. In witness whereof, by the authority vested in me as mayor, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the town of Wethersfield to be affixed this second day of April, 2018. There you are. And would any of you like to speak? So hello, my name is Logan Singerman. I moved to Wethersfield when I was eight. I had Mrs. Forrest as my third grade teacher. Then I graduated uh, from Wethersfield High School in 2009. Um, went to college, and after that, kind of was figuring out what I was going to do with my life. And I did three years of AmeriCorps. And so when I think of my years of service, I think that it will lead to a life of service. And I know that when people talk about my generation, there's mixed reviews. Um, but when people talk about the greatest generation, the reviews aren't as mixed. And I think part of the reason why we call that generation the greatest generation is because they had an opportunity to serve. And so when it comes to national service and when it comes to volunteering, I think that if we want the reviews to be less mixed, we need to give people more opportunities to serve. And so I'm super thankful for the opportunity I had serving in Hartford for three years, changed my perceptions, and now I just feel equipped. And I'm a much more, I guess, committed member of our societal fabric. Like, I didn't show up to city council meetings when I was in high school, but I definitely would now because I understand better how the world works. So anyway, thank you so much for your support. Um, yeah, we're just we're super thankful and have a great council meeting. <laughs> And our last proclamation is a Diabetes Heart Health Awareness Day. Whereas 354,240 people in Connecticut, or 11.3% of the adult population, have diabetes, including an estimated 93,000 who are undiagnosed in an additional 997,000 people, over 36% of the adult population have prediabetes. And whereas every year an additional, an estimated 11,000 people in Connecticut are diagnosed with diabetes, and adults with diabetes are two to four times more likely to die from heart disease than adults without diabetes. Whereas diabetes and prediabetes cost an estimated $4 billion in Connecticut each year through serious complications including heart disease, stroke, amputation, end-stage kidney disease, blindness, and death. And whereas the Central Connecticut Health District, which is headquartered in Wethersfield and serves as our local health district, has promoted diabetes awareness on their website and through educational programs. And whereas at least 68% of people who are 65 or older and who have diabetes die from some form of heart disease, and the American Heart Association considers diabetes to be one of seven major controllable risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Now, therefore, I, Amy Morin Bellow, Mayor of the Town of Wethersfield, do hereby proclaim April 10th, 2018, as Diabetes Heart Health Awareness Day in Wethersfield and urge all citizens to raise public awareness about the specific risks of heart disease for people with diabetes and help to ensure people at risk receive a timely diagnosis and proper treatment. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the town of Wethersfield to be affixed this second day of April, 2018. Okay, and next we have a presentation from the Weathersfield Public Library on their strategic plan. Good evening, Brooke.
Thank you, Mayor Bell. Um, how people create, reassemble, search, share, receive, process, question, act upon information, disinformation, or fake news is constantly evolving. Um, some in your community are embracing it, and some in your community are overwhelmed by it. The library is here to help. In order to meet the changing needs of our community, the Weathersfield Library Board sought to re-envision the library services that it provides. To that end, the library formed a strategic planning committee and enlisted consultants from MBNA to provide strategic planning services, which has resulted in a comprehensive, actionable, and forward-looking strategic plan for 2018 through 2023, which we would like to share with you this evening. The process. So some of you might have been involved in this. Um, first, we formed a, uh, the library board formed a strategic plan working group or committee. There were four community focus groups uh, that was facilitated by MBNA. Um, the consultants also conducted individual interviews with key community stakeholders, such as uh, a member of the Board of Ed, uh, town manager, EDIC, et cetera. Um, an online community, uh, an online and paper community survey was conducted last summer. There were over 600 responses. It is a treasure trove of information um, that at some point we would like to share more detailed information with you about. It's, it's really great because it's your community responding. Um, library staff were involved. They were engaged. They're the ones who are going to implement the plan. Um, their input and, and feedback was key. This included a staff survey, uh, interviewed staff at all different levels, and we held a staff retreat as well. Uh, research was conducted. Uh, we did an environmental scan to do comparisons of what's going on in surrounding, surrounding libraries. We looked at 21st century library practices, what are the best practices. Um, and then there is a report that I've shared with most of you, um, and if I haven't gotten it to you, I'm, I'm happy to do so, the a Aspen Institute report, uh, which is called Rising to the Challenge. Um, and that was put out um, a couple of years ago, and it was uh, funded by the Gates Foundation, and uh, they had done so much work uh, with libraries as they were wrapping up looking at global health became more of their focus. They tried to have a, a template for public libraries to look to utilize, and then so that was included. Um, and then just uh, the committee meeting with uh, the consultants and reviewing the findings, are we drawing the right conclusions from all of the data that we've gathered from the community and the research that we have done? Hi everybody, Hannah Granfield. Thanks for having us tonight. Uh, Weathersfield residents who responded to the community survey were invited to list three words that they wish described Weathersfield. If you look at the cloud bubble, the word bubble right now, you can see some of those words that our community wished that our town was. So they wish that we're friendly, that we're safe, we're inclusive, and we're informed. So it's kind of important for you to take a second and, and check that out. <clears throat> the importance of the library in the eyes of Weathersfield residents was made clear by the conversations and the survey responses. This word cloud describes, shows what re residents say currently describes our library today. Welcoming, helpful, they have lots of programs, community. I think if you've been to the library lately, you would agree with those same words on the board. In addition to understanding how people currently use the library, they shared their aspirations for the library, to be welcoming, offer inspiring programs, provide a comfortable space, showcase technology for patron use and learning, be a collaborative space for learning of all ages. This helped to frame the new library mission statement, which the library board approved in January 2018. The new mission statement is, the Weathersfield Library's mission is to provide a welcoming community gathering place with free and open access to resources and experiences that engage the imagination, inspire learning, and promote the exchange of ideas. Hi, I'm Doreen Ciarcia, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the goals. In fact, Hannah mentioned the five goals, um, and those resulted from the community input that was mentioned, but also taking a look at some of the professional best practices in the library world. 
And so from that, we had the five goals that were developed. Each goal has, or an objective, um, is measurable. Um, and there are also, to support those goals, 150 or so specific actions, um, which I will not go over tonight. Um, however, there, there's a sample of them um, in the strategic plan, which uh, will be on our website in the coming days. <clears throat> so it's available to anyone who is interested in, in seeing it. So the first goal that I believe is on there um, is to satisfy the curiosity and stimulate the imagination. Um, and we want to support our community in their endeavors to foster lifelong learning, creativity, and personal achievement. And you see there, there are five objectives. The first one has to do with providing programs and opportunities based on community need. And then we want to have our collections that inform and inspire uh, people. We want to make sure we're always relevant when it comes to technology. Very important these days, as we all know. Um, we want to make sure the community knows who we are and who knows the programs um, that we offer. And then one of my favorites, surprise and delight the community with innovative programs and resources. And some examples of those are a couple. Um, to reestablish outreach to Executive Square, engage that group, um, create a space for our foreign language collection. And one that we've actually already done is to launch our brand new website. So if you haven't had a chance to look at that, that was launched within the last week, and it's a, a wonderful space. Second goal, oops, sorry. Support young learners and their families, and that's birth to age 18. We want our youth and our families to have the resources that they need to be successful in their lifelong learning objectives. That includes things like expanding and developing, enhancing their literacy skills, um, also offering services that support families in the community to develop their knowledge and skills and the confidence needed to support the children in those goals and the, that learning. And then to create welcoming and vibrant spaces to encourage learning. Uh, some examples of that, update the children's room learning environment so it is a welcoming and inviting place. And then one of my other favorites, implement the program 1,000 books before kindergarten. The third goal, celebrate diversity, to have all Weathersfield residents have an awareness and appreciation of the different cultures within the community. Hannah had that word bubble up there and you'll see in there um, diversity was one of the, the key items that came through on the survey. Um, we want to provide the community members the opportunity to learn about their own ethnic heritage and their background. Um, we want to give them the opportunity to learn more about the world and uh, political perspectives, um, their own as well as others in the community. And then we want to create an environment for community members to appreciate and celebrate different perspectives and cultures. A couple of examples, actions that would uh, support those. Um, look for ways to further support the English conversation class, which is called Time to Talk. Another one, uh, 2018 World Cup soccer is uh, coming up this year. We want to look at ways to show that in the library so people can actually experience that firsthand in a way maybe some would not ordinarily. The fourth goal is to be an informed citizen. We want to play a fundamental role in the democratic process to promote civil enga civic engagement um, and civil engagement. The library's resources will be current, relevant, and easily accessible to everyone. We want to provide that environment for a healthy exchange of activities. And we want to increase our outreach to various civic groups. We serve many groups now, but there are always more. Um, to that end, we want to meet with three new local groups. And then we want to make sure our spaces are inviting and, and we are reaching as many as possible. So look to review and revise our meeting room policy so people have the opportunity to gather and share different perspectives. The last objective is to visit a comfortable place. Because all of this is great, but if you don't have a comfortable and welcoming place, no one is going to want to be there. So we want to provide spaces that encourage the collaboration. And we want to um, also have spaces that promote reflection and thought. And lastly, as I've mentioned, provide that welcoming environment. A couple of examples of that. Add track lighting for the art on the walls. We like to see what's on the walls. We have art, let's showcase it. That's a very welcoming, welcoming thing. Um, and lastly, in the world of, uh, of teenagers, um, they find a welcoming space, one that has multiple electrical outlets <laughs> so they can charge their various devices. So look into how to expand the electrical outlets that we do have within the library. Um, to that end and to future goals, um, we have key factors to success and Martha Keneally is going to talk about those. Thanks and thanks again for having us here tonight. Um, as an organization, as a board, and as, uh, as Brooke leads the staff, there's going to be certain priorities 
that we keep in mind as we go forward. And as we look at these, we're looking at these within the context of our current budget. Um, the first would be space reconfiguration. We've shared with you um, long-term plans that we have for refurbishing our space, but even within the, um, when we look at low cost and no cost options for how to address our space and make sure it's that welcoming environment, make sure we're meeting the diverse needs of our community. Um, there's a lot that we can do. One great example I love to share with people is if you haven't visited the upper level of the library recently, um, Brooke, with really, I don't think it cost anything, um, just in reconfiguring the way that the shelves were set up and moving furniture went from kind of individual seating to have a community gathering space there and it's a great place for, um, it's a quieter space but it's a place where you could gather with a group. It's a very comfortable space to sit and read. Um, there's, and we're looking at using various um, going into all aspects of our library space and seeing how we can reconfigure things and make sure it's as um, welcoming as it can be for our community. Uh, the second would be outreach and communication. It's not enough to just say we're celebrating diversity and supporting young learners. It, we have to reach out to the community and make sure that we're drawing those people in, that we're engaging those groups. And so um, staff time, for example, will be used to go out and actually reach out into the community and it'll be a focus of our board outreach as well. Um, it's <clears throat> paramount that we stay in touch with those folks but also that we keep in touch with our traditional library users and keep those open lines of communication with them. Um, we will be establishing ambassadors to different segments of the population, looking at word of mouth, trusted networks to spread the news and to allow for new partnerships to form. And we'll be looking to use both traditional and non-traditional forms of communication in order to do that, social media um, and, and engaging people in whatever ways that we can in order to draw them into our library and meet their needs. Uh, collection assessment is very important for us. It's, um, as we, we are constantly reviewing and updating our collection and, and, and um, bringing in new books, magazines, online databases, music, um, movies. Um, but we're gonna take a hard look at what circulates, what's requested, what people, um, what people want us to have. Um, and that's going to, the new strategic plan will become essential in our st strategy of selecting things. So for instance, as we celebrate diversity, we'll look to include multiple languages and diverse points of view in our collection. Uh, in order to make sure we're supporting patrons and being discerning citizens, um, we wanna make sure we have up-to-date, accurate resources for them to depend on as they look at the, the, um, the complicated world in which we live. Um, and then we know that a high turnover of books assures that we want to have things that people want to check out, um, obviously because that's meeting the needs of the community, but also because we don't want them just hanging out on the bookshelves and getting dusty. Um, and so we look for things to be turning over and, and a high checkout rate will be a way that we, we monitor our success in that area. Um, and then staff training and alignment is, uh, is very important. It's very easy to sacrifice staff training when budgets are tight, but we believe this is really counterproductive. Training allows our staff and our community to keep up with new trends, new technologies, and new ways to accomplish tax tasks in a more cost-effective way. Um, and change will happen more quickly when staff has new methods. In addition, as we look at the way that we're utilizing our staff, again, we're going to make sure that the staff um, staff responsibilities is in alignment with strategic responsibilities and so for instance somebody might be identified to be an outreach person and that will become part of their re regular responsibilities. This is not looking to add staff, this is just looking to utilize our staff in a way um, that is in line with what the community has told us they're looking for and what our strategic plan is, is looking at. Um, in terms of next steps, we're now sharing our strategic plan with our community. Um, tonight we're here with you. Um, the um, entire plan for you to read will be on the website starting tomorrow, our great new website, which you, we hope you'll check out anyway. Um, we're also incorporating the new strategic goals into the budget narrative. And so when you see our budget, you'll see the old way that we have our old priorities, but then you're going to see the new priorities and you'll actually see our um, budget requests broken out in accordance with each of the five strategic areas that you're looking at. 
Um, and we're going to prioritize and begin to implement those 150 <coughs> activities, and it's going to take time. That is years of work, not months of work, and that will be something that we look forward to sharing with the community over the next several months and years. And finally, we just, it's the last thing to do is just to say thank you. Thank you to our strategic planning committee. It was a privilege for me, and I know we all enjoyed serving on it with, with Brooke, and especially with our library staff. Um, they, uh, the care in which they took in putting this together and the, the hours that were on the ground for them was really something, and it was to hear them reflect their desire to make sure that they're meeting the, the needs of the, the community on a daily basis was really um, inspirational for us, I think, as a board. And then many thanks to our community. For those of you who have participated, we had 600 people participate in that online survey, which really was um, gratifying the warm regard people have for our library, but also gave us a great sense of, of what our community is looking for. And I think is great feedback for all of us uh, as we serve on different boards and commissions. So thank you very much. And Brooke is happy to answer your questions. <laughs> thank you. Um, Thank you for the presentation tonight. The library is a true gem in town, it really is. And I was happy to be able to take part in both the community focus group and the online survey because I think it really is important that we um, as citizens have a voice and, and can chime in on what we think is important or, um, for that. So does anybody have any questions? Mary? It's not so much a question, but just uh, congratulations. This is really top notch. The, this um, was really an excellent plan, the way it's laid out, the way that you went about pulling in that information, going to the community, getting the focus groups. I, I had the privilege of, of seeing this when you presented it to the board for approval because I'm the liaison. Um, but um, that, the more I see it, the more I realize what, um, what an impact it's going to have because I think that, you know, I, I mean, we look at the, um, the library sort of as the a, a sign or um, indicator of how vibrant a community is, and our um, our library is already that. But to, I just can't wait to see how this evolves because the way in which you've tied everything to the things that are really important to us um, is huge. So, great job! Congratulations. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments, Councilor Lesser? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I agree with the comments of how great the library is. And the Lesser family is frequently taking things out of the library, but not as frequently bringing them back. <laughs> so, um, if, Food for fines is in July. Yeah, so if there's a new wing that's promoted from the, <laughs> the um, money that we're donating for not bringing everything back on time. Uh, but love the library. And, uh, just a comment and a question. The comment is, really like that you built the budget around the five strategic priorities. So I give you a lot of credit for that. And then the question is, if there's one thing, and not just on the strategic part, but what's the first thing or the most important thing for you guys in terms of priorities, if you have a one most important thing? We're trying to prioritize the 150 actionable <laughs> items. Okay. Um, and I would say what we've initially identified in year one, um, launching the new website, we just accomplished that, um, and uh, 1,000 books for kindergarten, um, and then there's some visit a comfortable um, place um, items that are low-hanging fruit that we can do within our, our current operating budget. Um, so, you know, that's an example, but there's like 150 actionable <laughs> items um, that's over five years, and. You know, Doreen had mentioned some, um, but that's, yeah. Got it, thank you. Okay. Any other questions, Councilor Rell? Sure, thank you. Um, and I must concur, the Rell family has gone plenty of times with these snowstorms. They do take uh, canned goods too, non-perishable food items. Yeah. So um, we do. Thank uh, you, Councilor Rell. <laughs> we do share in that as well. Uh, I've, I too have been following this for a number of years and uh, I appreciate all the hard work that has gone into this. One thing, um, and it's not a question, it's more just a comment, uh, having two kids of my own and seven and nine, they're a little too young, I believe, to have electronic devices, but they don't believe so. Uh, kids in their teens, I know the library right now has a place for after school where the kids congregate kind of in right as you first get in on the right 525 hands. square feet yes it's kind of small for a little bit them uh <laughs> do you guys still have intentions of moving it 
in enlarging it and being more electronic friendly for for the kids um, kind of like a social cafe a little bit more of a library feel than what a Starbucks would be so we're looking to expand that space that's part of the the capital improvement projects that we've put forward um, to have it enlarged to over a thousand square feet mm -hmm. um, but in the interim to add in electrical um, right. we're you know that's we've had an electrical I'm looking at Sally <laughs> we've had an electrical study done we're like <coughs> maxed in that mm -hmm particular area can we add something in yes and that would right. you know but I don't like there's not enough seating because it's 50 to 75 teenagers who come in mm -hmm. um, either after school or after the after school programs at the middle school that, that descend in now are you guys seeing I know kids they get on I'm gonna date myself Facebook and Twitter but now snapchat and whatnot Instagram yeah uh, Instagram yeah. Um, are they also using electronic media as a tool to learn? I mean, I know we've the schools have going are going that route. Sure. Um, do, is there a continuum in the library? So we make sure that we don't purchase what the Board of Ed purchases. So they have double the resources in in town. We and we collaborate very closely with what they're purchasing. Um, we have. Uh, third grade visits that come in. We have seventh grade visits that come in where we kind of introduce them to what our plethora of electronic resources so that they have access even when, you know, if, it, if the school resources don't have it, they could receive it from us as okay. well. Does that end? Yeah, okay. I mean, I, yeah. as the paperback hardcover books, mm -hmm. they're starting, I mean, I would imagine in five years, 10 years, you know, everything's just gonna be on electronics uh, not everything, but you know, predominant whiteboards and classrooms and all that. Is it, the library is going to help. So we purchase, for example, like the Nutmeg. People have heard of the Nutmeg award-winning books that are selected every year from early younger readers to high school, and uh, we buy multiple copies in print and we buy multiple copies online and we check and see what the school has been able to purchase. Um, through theirs so that we're making sure we have as much available as possible. Good. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Councilor Forrest. Thank you. Um, tremendous plan. I guess uh, some of the follow-ups that I was thinking of was there was a discussion. I, will we be able to see the results of the survey? This looks like uh, there was maybe a plan built on that survey, but I I was one of the people that went down there for the 45 minutes and did it. I know a lot of people did, so I didn't know if the results are might be available to us. Or um, we can pull some of that. We got to make sure it's because those the, the focus groups of what you're referring to, where you're in a group of you know 12, 15 people inside the library as opposed to the survey. I was I remember going into the ground floor of the library and okay. filling out stuff on a computer. Yeah. And so the so so the survey that's data that we can share with you that's right. not really a problem the focus group because it's a smaller sure. yeah uh, so that was question one I think okay. just it would be interesting for us sure to I know get, I, on, get on board yeah. Yeah. Um, the second one was is there sort of a we heard talked about there, there are a hundred different items that the library wants to sort of work on but is there sort of a list of low-hanging fruit whether you want to develop a space in a certain way but hey I need a thousand dollars for a new <coughs> seating that's uh, that's appropriate for the area or we really could use this type of electronics where, you know, even in our sort of as, as, as counselors or friends of us that we're doing redevelopment that we could say, hey, you know, the library could really use $1,500 to just sort of knock this one off. Yeah, sure. Um, is there a list like that, sort of? Yeah. We so we could I help you and get a bank to say, like, let's have this banking section. Maybe we'll make a little plaque, you know, this size and just get it done. So I do have a, a list. Um, that I maintain and we've been checking off and going through that and I um, previously had a, like a furnishings line in my op general operating budget that I could do that every year. Yeah. Um, you approved at the end of the last fiscal year um, capital a capital reserve that we could go and we would come and ask to you to pull from our reserve um, for that kind of purpose um, and so and then we do we're we're so blessed that we have uh, the Friends of the Weathersfield Library um, because sometimes that's something they may want to put their, you know, Friends of the Weather, sponsored, you know, 
bought by friends. Um, and so we do, um, we'll ask them for those types of items uh, from time to time. Um, and so, and they're, they've n never said no so far. And there's a book <laughs> sale this weekend uh, for everyone. <laughs> um, and so we're able to, you know, they're able to fund those kind of items. Is so, that, yeah. Well, so, so I guess what I was thinking was if there's, if you have a list of say, hey, we want to accomplish this goal, here's how much we think it's going to cost, or this piece of this goal to like break it up into smaller chunks. And there's a lot of people that talk to a lot of businesses and donors and so forth that maybe say, hey, I just found out that you are aligned with um, helping people out with a certain type of, uh, uh, you know, maybe health condition. And we want, and went, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, we really want to give back to the community and do something. Oh, and guess what? The library's got a section that they're developing on that condition. And be like, well, let's make this a marriage and let's make this work. Or you want to develop an area for teens and we're out talking to businesses and they're like, yeah, we really want to get a teen program going because we want to have a work shadow, job shadowing. Well, boy, there's a, Sarah, they're trying to do this at the library that aligns with your, with your, uh, your goals and your missions. Wouldn't this be great to marry? And maybe they'll make a contribution to get that done. Yeah. And so we'll help you check off that list, but we need the list, right? Yeah. So if sure. you've got a list like that that's okay. with some specifics that we can align uh, people's desires, I think I'd be more than happy to help you out. And the last one is, and I don't know if this was... And that would be appreciated. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll try get my you, best. Get your no list. <laughs> Uh, but and then the last the last thought I had was that is there is there some discussion as we look through the strategic plan to do a cafe style and I'm sort of pulling off of Councillor Rell but we have had conversations uh, I remember we had the like the meet and greet where we were sort of mm -hmm. talk chatting about a lot of stuff is there ideas to sort of like get a cafe style thing and you know almost get that little like that little buzz maybe even you know sell some coffee and so forth but it, it gets that sort of area yeah. <laughs> that's and that's part of that plan um, that's contingent right now on my plumbing yeah <laughs> um, but no that is part of the capital improvement project um, where we're purposing the three spaces in that we'd have that in the front area uh, the front room of the library um, so that is something and we do permit people to eat right now in the library we actually do sell coffee right now um, but it's only out of a a carrying machine. Yeah, right. But, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay. Okay, thank you again for the presentation. Thank you. Okay, so we have a resolution tonight um, of the Town of Wethersfield supporting participation in the Sustainable Connecticut Municipal Certification Program. Is there anybody here tonight who would like to speak on that one hearing item? Come on up. Public comments are limited to five minutes. Good evening, I'm Kelly De La Cruz. I live at 179 Middletown Avenue. Um, based on my support of other environmental issues in town, I am also going to support enrolling in the Sustainable CT program. This is a completely free program um, and it could potentially lead to receiving grants, which is free money. And of course, we would love to have free money here in town to support additional changes here in town that would um, be supportive of the environment. Um, so free, if it's for free, it's for me is my saying, and this is something that just makes a lot of sense, and that's all I really have to say about this. So I really hope that we definitely sign on to this. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Sir, come on up. Good evening, Kevin Sullivan from 79 Wright Road. I uh, would also like to express my support for uh, engaging in the uh, sustainable CT program. I think it's a really good way to uh, pursue environmental conservation interests, which is one thing, but I, th I think it also does larger, fits larger pieces together to help build the community more generally. Uh, the town, I, I understand, has done some of the things already that would uh, count toward qualification. Uh, I'm working, some of you may uh, re recognize me as being part of Bike Walk Weathersfield. Uh, the town has recently uh, decided to form an ad hoc committee 
uh, to develop a biking and pedestrian master plan, that uh, action will count toward uh, the sustainable CT qualification. Um, I also have a personal interest in the, the sustainable CT agenda in general, so if there's any kind of ad hoc committee or something like that that is formed, I'd be interested in participating, uh, willing to volunteer. I'm sure there are others as well. Uh, could be, as, as Kelly pointed out, could be a, a net gain with income as far as grant money. Uh, long term, I think there's a savings for the town anyway with, with these sorts of things. So I don't think it's a big ask, especially at this point. So I'd uh, strongly encourage you to, to uh, vote for participation. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, I, read, I read the information on, on the website regarding this uh, sustainable Connecticut, and uh, I really have reservations about it. I sort of equate it to this organization called NESDEC, uh, the New England School Development Council. It seems like this council, this NESDEC council, had, had a lot to do with forcing uh, the issue of renovating our high school that didn't need to be renovated. And I, as I was reading through this, I could see programs that they would be supporting. Whether, and, 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 and the town would say, oh, but we have support from the Sustainable Connecticut Group. Oh, it's just another, another farce that we have in this state of, 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 of the Ponzi schemes that has built up to where we are today. Um, I, I, really, I really don't think it's anything we should get involved in. I really believe we should be more involved in our own everyday life and costs of running our town. I think we need to find better ways of uh, uh, spending our money and, and staying away from these groups that will impose their ideas that end up costing us a lot of money. Thank you. Please vote no on it. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Come on up, Martha. Uh, Martha Keneally, 12 Fairmont Street. Um, I just want to um, add my comments in support of joining Sustainable CT. Um, this is an effort that a number of communities across the state have joined. Um, as Kelly mentioned, it definitely is something that allows an entree into grant funding um, and will be helpful with initiatives that we're having, will provide great guidance. It's actually, I think, leaning towards that regional approach um, that we can all get behind. and so. Um, I just would strongly support it and hope that the council does so too. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Okay, seeing none, I will declare the hearing closed. We'll move into public comments, general comments. Members of the public have five minutes to speak on any topic. Is there anybody who'd like to speak? Mr. Young? <coughs> Good evening again, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. At the last meeting, at the last number of meetings, Mayor, I've asked you regarding this lease with the Town of Wethersfield and the Wethersfield Historic Society for the Standish House. There's a clause in there under terms, and it says landlords shall have the right at the 10th lease year and each 10th year thereafter with the tenant involved and discussion and upon approval of the town council to revise monetary terms and conditions set forth, so forth and so on. I've asked you more than once, have you negotiated with these people to bring that $100 rent that we pay, that they pay us, and bring it up to some kind of a standard to equate to the $43,000 or $42,000 that Lucky Lou pays them? Have you done that, ma'am? Well, this 
is your five minutes to talk, but we... Yes, okay, okay. now, there's also the other lease. <laughs> Has a very similar, or maybe the exact kind of wording. And that's the same one for the Weathersfield, the town of Weathersfield and the Weathersfield Historic Society and uh, the Keeney Center. Uh, you had the same statement in, in the lease to come back and negotiate a new lease dollar amount per year. And now that they've, they do have leasees in there, um, and I did ask the manager for copies of the lease, he hasn't responded except for he doesn't have it, and he told me to go get it myself, which I'm not the landlord. <coughs> he represents the landlord. Uh, also in this lease, ma'am, and uh, it doesn't allow or doesn't require the Weathersfield Historic Society to provide any leases that they sublease that property to. That means the Weathersfield Chamber of Commerce, who is leasing from them, that lease doesn't have to come to the town of Weathersfield because the great people who wrote this lease are town attorneys, um, didn't include it. Didn't include it at all. And of course, this lease was, was uh, approved by the town, the town Planning and Zoning Commission unanimously, <coughs> as well as the town council. And Mr. Forrest, of course, was on that town council at that time. Uh, I mean, he's a lawyer. You would have thought he would have been looking out for the best interests of the citizens that he claimed he was representing. But obviously, a, a very important thing is missing after I got hold of the lease and we looked at, I looked it over. And, and it's a shame. It's a very big shame. And here we are looking for money, and we don't have it. We don't even have the ability now, since you haven't, Mayor. You've been on this council for several years. You and the prior mayor should have been negotiating with them to bring that, those, those uh, rentals that they have up and put the money in our pocket. But obviously, you failed to do that. I um, also, over the last few days, been reading, paper, reading in the paper uh, regarding the state agrees to pay the cities that's the Hartford, Hartford City, $550 million of debt over the next 20 years. Um, I was outraged when I read that. I, I thought it was only two years. But obviously, they slipped something through on us. And, it, and not only that, there's a number of mayors, mayor, in the state of Connecticut that are also outraged. And I believe Tony Harp from New Haven was screaming. Even the most incredible Mr. Joe Gammon was screaming. And I was looking for your name in here, but I didn't see it. Maybe we'll see it next week. Huh? I think the people of Weathersfield should be represented and be screaming because as they take the state money, we don't get the state money. It just works that way. And we end up being the losers, and we sit back, and we haven't said a word. We haven't screamed. But mayors right across the state have been, they're quoted in the newspapers now regarding this issue. And, and we should have some kind of representation here in our town. You know, uh, my, um, Luke Bronin came here back several years ago uh, looking for support for his community. Okay, your time is up. Yes, so I'll, please I'll wrap it up, ma'am. I'll Thank wrap you. it up. And uh, he got no support. Yet he still ended up with the big, the big bundle of cash. And uh, we should be all screaming because as he gets the bundle of cash, we end up losing. But maybe that's because of our government. Thank you very much, ma'am. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Martha? Sorry, I'm really taking advantage. Uh, Martha Keneally, 12 Fairmont Street. Uh, I'm not able to be here for the um, town, the next meeting when we'll be discussing the budget. So I just really wanted to say a quick word in support of the library budget. 
Um, I, I am proud to be supporting the, the library's budget. Um, I think as you, you know, as discussed earlier, and we are so appreciative of the um, great support that we always have from the town council and from our community. Um, Brooke is, um, has been such a fiscally responsible manager. I think when you take a good look at the budget, as, as you start to take a look at it, you're gonna be able to see that she really has um, gotten the most out of every bit of funding that you have been gracious enough to provide for us and that the community supports um, for the library. Um, we've actually had reductions in almost every line item over the course of several years. It's obvious, and I think we're all seeing this in the different departments, it's the health insurance that's driving the, 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 the slight increase that we're looking at, but um, we have really um, dug deep on every item to make sure that we're getting the most value um, and, uh, you know, going into collection, going into our specialized agency supplies, going into post, every little bit that we can. Um, and, you know, we, we, we do that, but we also are very dedicated to um, providing that, that service that the community wants. There is no, um, there's no department in Weathersfield that has hours longer than um, the library except for the um, police and the fire department. And in fact, we're really open 24 hours um, because you can always access our library services online from your home. Um, I actually keep um, a library app on my phone right here. It's called Hoopla. If you haven't gotten in on Hoopla yet, um, Mr. Rell, I think mm -hmm. you want to check it out. Um, it is a great way to download books, music, movies. Um, they have multiple languages. You can get both Spanish and English editions of some books. Um, and it's, uh, it's very current. It's really good. There's, we have other resources like Freegal, which will provide online music. And um, my husband's favorite, I always say, is Consumer Reports, which you can access from home. So we are really open 24 hours a day, and we have people utilizing it. We have, we have Wi-Fi that goes until, Brooke, you'll correct me, through 2 in the morning, 12. And people will sit outside the library even in the evening and, and hook into our Wi-Fi um, because it's a sort. It's you know sometimes it's hard to believe it's something that not everybody has access to, and it's a, and we're happy to provide that for for people in our community. Um, and so uh, I, again, I just thank you in advance for your support and thank you for the support you have given us, and um, thank the community for uh, the great support that you give to the library. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Good evening, David Kirk, 149 Broad Street. I'd just like to say, um, uh, I was listening to the library, what they were saying so, uh, in their, in their uh, little presentation, and uh, they mentioned uh, encourage uh, civic engagement. I thought, well, uh, I think maybe they should have a sign on, on Mondays, every other Mondays, come here because we could use more civic engagement at Town Hall. We, ha we have the regular speakers, and and and, they're okay. Well, that, that's how. I'm <laughs> I'm being nice there, but uh, but uh, but I did see some civic engagement at the last board of ed, where two high school girls came up to speak, and one was the mayor's daughter uh, uh, regarding uh, something going on in the high school. I I spoke afterwards, put a little rain on their parade by disagreeing with them, but uh, but you know that's we you know that's what we do. We we give our opinions uh, and. Uh, in our honesty, and um, uh, and as far as the budget, I, I don't have anything to say about it now. I I guess I didn't, I didn't hear it yet, and I and I didn't read it either. But uh, uh, I support the library. You know, I, I remember when the library was gonna, we were hoping it would move many years ago to the uh, the motor vehicle. When we think motor vehicle is gonna move out, we're gonna take over that. We'll put the town council, we'll put the library in there, and some of the librarians were all excited about it. But uh, then we found out that it would cost a fortune to clean it up because there was all the best stuff in there, and plus the state wasn't going to move out anyway. But uh, uh, that would have been exciting, you know. But uh, thanks. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Okay. Seeing none, we will move on to council reports. Council members. Council Arell? Um, well, I guess it would be a council report. Um, it's just an advisory. As a um, historical society, 
liaison, the Taste of Weathersfield is coming up this Saturday, the 7th. Uh, I believe in advance you can purchase tickets for $30. At the door it's $35. The money goes to um, a number of uh, worthy causes that the Historical Society puts on. So, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Councillor Spinella? We had another meeting of the Memorial Day Parade Committee. Um, the parade is going to be on May 26th. The town, well, the theme, I, th I think, is town employees who have served in the military. Um, we haven't come up with a speaker yet. I know uh, Mike's working on that. Um, but we encourage everybody to come out May 26th. Thank you. Any other reports? Councillor Lester. Thank you, Mayor. Just to mention, we had a shared services meeting uh, and we continue to work at the board to look at uh, different efficiencies. At this time, we are not going ahead with the com combination of the maintenance uh, under the, the town side uh, because it wasn't going to be an efficiency in saving us money at this time, but we continue to look for ways to work together, uh, share services, and potentially save money. Thank you. Any other council reports? Moving into council comments. Deputy Mayor. Uh, just want to report last Tuesday after the third try because of the snow we finally had the ribbon cutting down at the old true value building where uh, I, just, I, want, I know I'm going to myrtleize the name <laughs> Kelly Bond Raymond uh, opened up it's a Oriental restaurant that uh, the super job I went in afterwards I got a tour of the place they even have their own noodle machine. They make their own noodles from scratch. Uh, so everything will be fresh over there. Being an Italian who loves homemade pasta, uh, this really adds to it. Uh, so you know, anybody that's looking for it, their soups were delicious. I had some. So I highly recommend you go and support this new business in town. Thank you. Thank you. Other council comments? Okay, um, Bobby Granado and I met with 14 residents and business owners at Heirloom Market on Saturday, March 24th for our Coffee with the Mayor and Chair. Um, it's a great opportunity for residents who don't want to um, come and speak at a council meeting, but you do want to speak to one of us. We're, we're there to, for that purpose. Um, our next Coffee will be at Aroma Bistro on April 21st, 930 to 11, and I encourage anybody to come out and speak to us on any issue that they have. Um, I, too, have written down the Taste of Weathersfield Saturday, April 7th at 7 p.m. Keeney Cultural Center. Purchase tickets online or at the door. Um, there's a yard cleanup day in Weathersfield Saturday, April 21st. Residents can bring up to a half cubic yard of brush to the transfer station at no cost. Um, and the Weathersfield Public Library's book sale is this weekend. And I don't have the hours. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Thursday, night, Saturday, and Monday. Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thank you. Okay. Um, now we'll move into the town manager's report. And the town manager has an overview of the 2018-2019 proposed budget. Sustainable energy. <laughs> well, the projectors take a while. Once you turn them off in a short period of time and turn them back on, it takes a minute or two. There we go. Okay. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor and Council and uh, members of the public. Um, this is a brief overview of the 2018-19 budget. Um, there is a voluminous 
full edition online that you are at, uh, you can read. It, uh, it breaks down each department very similar to what the library did into five or six major components and cost factors for each department. Um, it's very detailed. We've got a lot of statistics in it about building permits, um, law enforcement activity, fire department activity, uh, those kind of things. So if you have uh, several hours with nothing to do, I encourage you to read through the entire budget. It is, it is very good information source for the town, not just for its budget. Um, so we're going to start tonight on the proposed budget for next year. There'll be a more in-depth um, presentation at the public hearing, but I'll give you the highlights. Okay, we're going to start with the current year budget and its evolution to its current state. Uh, this is kind of a table on uh, where we've been with the current year budget. Uh, as you know, by charter, we have to adopt by May 15th of each year, and we did so last year knowing that the state didn't have a budget and knowing that whatever we adopted would probably come back around and be amended. So in October, the state adopted a new budget or stopped at their state budget, and we had to adjust the town's budget formally to account for the municipal aid, the change in the motor vehicle tax rate, and uh, um, some significant municipal aid reductions. And you can see right there, you know, it's kind of, that's ouch, that hurts. And then after we adopted the budget and thought we were in the clear, the state came back again, or actually the governor came back again and said, well, the legislature gave me the authority to reduce the budget by 30 to $50 million. And he decided to do that by eliminating even more state aid. So we, after another $922,000 cut, the town did what was called a deficit mitigation plan, which is the last column. We didn't formally amend the budget, but both the board and the town recognized certain changes to their spending and uh, revenue plans to account for the reduction. And that's kind of where we ended up for the fiscal year, and that's kind of our target for the fiscal year overall. <coughs> Um, for the town budget for next year, our starting point wasn't the end result of the deficit mitigation plan, but when we talk about budget over budget, we're talking about what we had formally adopted in November of uh, 2017. That's what we consider the current year budget. Um, okay. So if we look at that, 2017 over 20, 2018 over 2019, you can see overall we're going up. $2.8 million, and you can see kind of the deltas between the two. Um, we're going up to 104, and if you can see the chart below, the spending increase townwide is 2.85% over the November 17 budget. Um, the Board of Ed, when they did their budget, they looked at the deficit mitigation plan. They gave you a, a number of 1.9 million increase that was projected off the deficit mitigation plan. When we ran the percentages, we used the November 17 budget, so their number is slightly uh, less of an increase, 1.7 million. Um, so those are the differences there. Um, the mill rate, ouch. Um, and that's what you get when you lose a couple $3 million worth of state aid. Um, and so even as we work this budget for next year, two items to keep in mind. Uh, the state has not solved its current year $260 million deficit. The governor's plan is to further reduce municipal aid by 30 to $50 million. So even though we are now three months away from ending our fiscal year or four months away from ending our fiscal year, we are not totally guaranteed on the revenue we're anticipating for municipal aid to date. Also, um, we're using the governor's budget numbers for municipal aid for next year. Whether or not those survive the legislative process, we don't know. Um, I guess appropriations is supposed to pass something out by the end of Thursday. And we'll, we maybe have a better idea of the legislature's thought process. So as we work our budget through until May 15th, those are two things to keep in mind that uh, nothing is set in stone when it comes to municipal aid. Um, looking at municipal aid, you can see the deltas between the two years. Um, you know, some big numbers here. The municipal stabilization grant, which is an evolution of the 
<coughs> reimbursement we were supposed to get for lowering the motor vehicle tax is evaporated for next year. That's gone. Um, if you look at the ECS grant, you're showing 8.8 .8 million in the current year. Actually, that's before holdback. The real number after holdbacks is about 800, 8 million. So there's an $800,000 difference there. So that number's actually lower for next year. This is just what's in the adopted, uh, lower for this year. That's just what's in the adopted budget. Um, so these numbers are subject to change for next year. You can see uh, Mohegan Grant, the Pequot Grant's down. Um, town aid, a LOSIP, that goes into our road fund. That's down quite a bit. Overall, municipal aid is uh, where the money is for the state. Cost drivers, of course, uh, people. You know, people do what we do. So that's going to be a big deal. So we're using uh, current uh, approved contracts. We have uh, one union that's in arbitration, so their numbers are, are guesstimates at this point. Uh, for non-department, for non-union employees, part-timers, and those took a hard zero this year. We're anticipating 2% for next year. Um, employee retiree health benefits are going up quite a bit. Uh, that includes the commitment to the incremental growth and the uh, contribution to the OPEB fund, but retiree health benefits are going up $216,000. Health insurance, as you heard earlier this evening, that's at a 6% increase for right now. We're hoping that goes down, but our claim volume this year has been heavy, heavier than in prior years. Um, Metropolitan District, um, $345,000 increase for next year. That's just a huge, huge piece bite at the apple for us. Um, the health district's going up a little bit. As I said, the, the low SIP money uh, that goes into roads is, is being reduced by 122. Now we've made that up with local tax dollars to keep stay at the $1.5 million uh, road paving budget. But again, that's local money replacing state aid. And then we have increased mandates from the state of Connecticut. I want to bring attention to two that are outlined in my message. One is the uh, what's called the elderly circuit breaker, which is a property tax credit for elderly and disabled homeowners of certain income eligibility. The state used to pay that program, which ran over $200,000 a year. They have now shifted that to the towns and required us to pick up the program and pay that bill. The second one is very similar, in, but it's for uh, elderly and disabled renters under certain income limits. It's called renter's rebate. The state used to pay for that program too, and they are now requiring the towns to pick up half of that. Um, that's a $135,000 cost to us. Um, as we talk about ECS, this is the ECS grant as a percent of the education budget. You can see that uh, state's commitment to education in Wethersfield's down. Actually, if you look at this number, that's what's in the budget, but in reality, after holdbacks, it's probably down here somewhere for the current year. And, uh, <laughs> you have a, a yeah. pretty good guess. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you kind of guess it's lower. <laughs> you know, it's not up here. It's down here. So that's really the challenge of our budget. It's really not. I mean, there's a there's a spending issue. You know, on some elements, I'm sure people will have that opinion. But the municipal aid is, and the revenue from municipal aid is is driving a lot of that um, grant. Now, as a corollary, this is we ran a number. What percent? of the increase in the town side spending is the MDC increase. And you can see that the MDC increase makes up 24% of the town's spending increase for next year. 24%. I think, uh, I know there's a desire to have conversations earlier this year. And uh, we fully intend to have those conversations with the MDC earlier this year. Um, to what effect, I don't know, but we'll do it. Um, we talk about fund balance. We talk about fund balance all the time. The proposed fund balance at the end of fiscal 19 is proposed to be 10.6%. This is a chart of the fund balance over the past 10 years. As you can see, we kind of boosted it up when we started getting into the high school project to maintain 
positive uh, bond ratings, and now we're kind of sustaining somewhere around 10.5%, or that's kind of the goal. Um, CIP, again, we're staying at 1.5 million for roads, and this is kind of the breakout of how else we're spending $900,000 of capital improvement funds. Not a lot of money there, but a lot to be spent on. Um, drainage, fire safety and improvements, sidewalks, town buildings. This includes re-roofing the Solomon Wells House. Um, schools, talks, is some additional security enhancements. Um, recreation parks, of course, and pavement maintenance is for crack ceiling in uh, town parking lots. Um, Nine hundred thousand dollars. That's all we got. Does any of those include those dams we talked about? No. Dams are big bucks. Those are going to be five hundred thousand to a million dollar hits. We, we're going to have to think about how we get there on those projects. Um, the proposed public public hearing is two weeks from this evening, seven p.m. in this room. Uh, the town budget's online, weathersfieldct.gov. It's on the front page. Uh, comments can be sent to Jeff Bridges at weatherfieldct.gov or the town clerk or any one of you. Your emails are published. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, come out in the next couple of weeks. It'll be a kind of a more in-depth presentation, but that's kind of the, uh, the five-minute show there. And I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any this evening. Mike O'Neill, our fabulous finance director and his staff, along with all the department heads, I want to thank very much again. Uh, I think all our department heads to a person, all our employees to a person understand the, uh, the resource restrictive environment we're in and we don't really get, you know, the requests that they know don't have a, a real fighting chance. So I appreciate everybody in the, on the town staff um, looking at hard numbers and looking at their budgets and being realistic and I really appreciate the town staff, finance department, Cheryl Pierce in my office, um, for doing a great job getting this budget together. So, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And you and Mike and your teams have done a great job bringing in a budget um, with all of the difficulties that you showed us at 2.85 overall. So um, it'll be a long, a long month of budget deliberation, but you've definitely brought in a budget that's at a good starting point for us to begin those deliberations, and I thank you for that. Thank you. Um, are there any council members that have some general questions for tonight? Councilor Rell? Two questions. Uh, one, back to the, you don't have to bring it up, but that slide about the increases, salaries, mm -hmm. um, in particular the health insurance costs, 6.5% mm -hmm. increase. Where do we see, what's the increase? What's driving that? Um, claim volume. Uh, we're self insured, so the first $150,000 of any claim, the town pays direct. So we are seeing, and we've had a couple of um, cases in town where these claims for individuals have gone over 500,000 to a million dollars over the past 18 months. So we're seeing higher claim volume than we have in the past. Um, costs are up medical wise, costs go up medical wise three, four, five percent a year. So that's kind of driving that number. Now we hope as usually by the time we get around to um, May, that number drops a little bit, but it is, it's, the claim numbers are up there. We usually get a bill every day from Anthem for about $70,000 a day. Uh, in February, we have it a $250,000 a day, and we had a $300,000 a day back to back. Yeah. So that's driving those numbers. The second question, and I know we're going to be talking about it, MDC. Mm -hmm. well, I remember when, and I forget what it was, oh, it was the uh, ad valorem tax, that debate. Um, Weathersfield, we rank up there pretty high. We're not as high as Hartford, West Hartford. We're somewhere in the middle of the uh, region of towns that you know utilize MDC. Mm -hmm. Are the other towns facing a 24% or, well, whatever the increase would be, but ours is 24% of the increase. Are they facing... Yes. Yeah, huge it's, numbers as well. It's spread evenly across. Well, it's not spread evenly. Basically, the ad valorem is a, is a product of a kind of a calculation that looks at your tax levy and your taxable property. Um, so if, you, if your tax levy's down and your collection rate's down, 
so is your MDC assessment. Mm -hmm. If your tax rate's up and your collection rate's up, your assessment goes up because you're collecting more taxes. Right. Right? So that's kind of the, the catch-22 of, of that whole thing. Mm -hmm. So. But, Jeff, to be clear, our, our increase is about 9%. The 24% represents how much that increase represents um, the overall increase in our budget, but that, we're actually up 9%. That's, that's correct. The, the MDC okay. increase is 9%. Yeah. What that chart showed is of, our, of the towns, just the town side, not the Board of Ed side, of that 2.75% increase on the town side, of that amount, MDC makes up 24%, almost a quarter mm -hmm. of our total increase on the town side. Right. That's what that chart showed. Yeah. It wasn't up that they were up 24%. I'm no, sure. and I knew it. I I'm just sure they'll remember. get there, but, you know. I just couldn't remember the 9.72 or right. whatever that right. number was. But every all the towns, you go, we go to these meetings, and all of them have the same argument. Now, there's a working group and a consultant that's working on a study to move the, the, M, the MDC away from a sewer ad valorem, because really the ad valorem just covers sewer service. Moving away from that to a direct bill sewer charge. Um, and there's pros and cons to that on both sides, but there's a working group looking at that uh, study. Every 20 years it comes up, and every 20 years there's another study to look at it. But uh, we've, in, we've engaged, because the towns are kind of running this show with the MDC, engaged a consultant to look at what's the net effect of moving away from the ad valorem and just being part of the water bill. So that will be over the next few months. We'll have those conversations. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Councillor Bratton? Yeah, thanks. I, I just had a question on the elderly circuit breaker. I was mm -hmm. trying to understand in, I understand that they're going to cut it, but then we have a program that's similar, but that doesn't, that doesn't help any. Um, no, I, having to, or does it, or will that work with our uh, liability to have to pay for that? Maybe. No, there's no connection between the two, although okay. they both do the same thing. Uh, historically, ours has been stacked on top okay. of the states, and now you get both. So we have to do what the state did, and then we continue with the program that mm -hmm. we already have. Okay, yeah. thanks. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Councillor Hurley? Back to the MDC. Oh. Um, okay. Is the consultant independent, or is it somebody that the MDC uses all the time? Uh, there was a RFP put out by, in conjunction with the towns serving as the kind of the RFP panel. Uh, the towns reviewed the RFPs and made a recommendation to the MDC on who to pick. So the, the towns are in the middle of that. And you are in the middle of that, too? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Deputy Mayor? Uh, Jeff, uh, skim through the book and everything so far, you know, interesting reading, to say the least. Uh, but on the Excel spreadsheet you gave us, uh, because we're past April 1st, would it be possible to add one more column to this and give us the nine months actual year to date for this fiscal year as well? Personally? As we go into the workshop meetings, we'll provide more information. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Forrest? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Jeff. Excellent job putting the book together. I guess my three questions revolve around a couple things. Is first is, are there any town side? Um, I, don't, I don't know if improvements is the right word, but anything that you put into this budget that you that are in addition to maybe what we've been doing in the, over the last twelve months, uh, some type of an initiative that you wanted to take, or you were no. able to make move something around and say, no, we'd like to head in this direction. Any sort of changes or is it really just sort of exactly like it was last it's, year but it's what i would call a current services budget okay uh, and there's no new people in it got on it. the town side um and then for uh, when we talk about the it, the potential increase of 2.85 percent for each do you have any idea and i think it might be a million dollars but do you have any idea for each percentage that we increase the revenue um what is that worth is that a mil million dollars for each percentage point? Well, the budget's roughly $104 million, so every million dollars represents slightly less than 1%. Okay. Okay. Now, on a revenue side, each mill represents roughly almost 
over $2.1 million, between sure. $2.1 and $2.2 million. So each mill is between $2.1 and $2.2 million for one mill. When is the next uh, revaluation? This tax? fall. So that will obviously be, could be significantly adjusted depending on. For next year's budget, yeah. you'd be looking at a new grand list right. that's and based upon the, the reval. Sure. Yep. Um, and the fund balance guidance, uh, you know, 10.5, 10.6, we're in the 10s. Is there, is there guidance as, uh, as it relates to certainly like our bond rating and sort of looking to the future about, you know, maybe some schools, school projects and stuff? Prior, so what to, is that guidance? prior to 2008, 2009, before the meltdown, 10%, 11% was looked at as pretty positive. Now we hear from the rating agencies every time we have a call, 15. Everybody wants 15. 15 is kind of the benchmark now for what the rating agencies are looking for as adequate, sufficient. Um, that's kind of the number. 10 to 11. No, 15. Is 15 X, like, so uh, what is our bond rating right now? I couldn't remember. Uh, double A plus. Double A plus. One step below the highest rating. Okay. So if we were to achieve the 15%, would we, would it be, look, would that be the type of situation where our bond rating might be the triple A, I guess? Um, I don't know if that alone would get us there. There's so many factors in uh, bond rating. I think that would help sustain the double A plus because we right now have a negative outlook because of the regional financial insecurities. Um, but it would definitely help us stay at double A plus. And what do you, what are they, what would the bond ratings be looking at to, I guess it's several things, but is there another town we can look to that has a bond rating that is better than ours? And West Hartford. Finances? And would they have a 15%? Uh, they actually have a lower, um, a lower, um, fund balance, but their grand list tends to grow faster. So when you look at a bond rating, it's a combination of factors and how those individual factors come together for your community. So in Weathersfield's case, we have a double A plus rating and the things that work positively for us uh, are the fund balance of 10% and it's stable. We're not throwing a lot of money at it at, at the budget on fund balance to, to buy down the taxes. So we've maintained a stable fund balance and we're right. committed to it. Yep. We pay 100% of our ARC on the pension every year. We have a plan to address our long-term retiree health obligation and we've stuck to that plan. Yep. Uh, we have a history of conservative budgeting. Uh, our budget performance always is in the positive. Uh, maybe we end the year with a Ten, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars here, or there, but we're not blowing the budget every year. Um, we have a decent grand list, which is stable, if not growing. We don't have a continuation of uh, grand lists that uh, going down. Uh, so you look at those combination of factors. We have stable revenues generally on the town side, apart from municipal aid. Um, so those are positives in in our respect. Now, if you're a town that has a substantially increasing uh, grand list, but you're, you're kind of lower on your fund balance, you know, those, those issues kind of play against one another. And it just depends on the mix and the town's environment that they're in. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Are there any other questions? Councilor Rell? Just to follow up on that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Governor Malloy's administration last year, OPM Secretary Ben Barnes had sent a letter to all the municipalities questioning their fund balance. Yes. And if you achieved a fund balance of over 15%, it was kind of looked at you're a little too healthy and the rates or the uh, municipal funding that would come from the state to the municipalities was cut if they looked at your fund balance at a certain threshold and I forget what it was 1499 or something like that they had so would it be advantageous of us to keep a fund balance of less than 15 but greater than 10 somewhere in between you know maybe not too too high of 12 5 or something like that or is 10 5 10 6 fine healthy enough I think what I mean I would love to be at 15 but I think the number of dollars to get you to 15 would absorb other critical needs in the budget. I think we got to 10.5 and 11% in a couple years uh, 
on purpose. Okay, so if we can hold the 10.5 and maybe fluctuate between 10.5 and 11 here and there, I think that's positive. I don't think we're gonna, if we made a conscious effort to get to 15, I think you're gonna suck resources from other needs that you, you may prioritize above that. Mm -hmm. I think stability is key. I think if we start throwing $800,000, $900,000 a year of fund balance into the budget and we start dropping, that's gonna impact the bond rating. I think if we move away from our commitment to our long-term legacy obligations, pension and OPEB, that's gonna affect the bond rating. I think I would recommend you try to stay where you're at with the, with the fund balance. And again, remember, it's a percent of general fund spend. So every year, if you go up a little bit on your general fund, you gotta tweak that fund balance a little bit to stay at that same percentage. Uh, I don't think you can get to 15 without really sacrificing something else. Right. And I think if we can show stability to the bond rating agencies and showing our commitment to roads, 1.5 million, capital improvements, the OPEB and liability costs and so forth and so on, and, and each year getting a little tick on the grand list. I think they look at overall management of the municipality and, and uh, that's positive, positive. We, you know, I don't know what the governor's gonna believe, but you know, or OPM, but there'll be a new one next year, and we'll see what their thoughts are on the matter. Thank you. Any other, qu any other questions or comments? Okay, thank, thank you. you. The town clerk, do you have anything to add tonight? No, I do not. Okay, thank you. Next item of business is an appointment to boards and commissions. Do I have a motion? Councilor Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move to add to the Zoning Board of Appeals to fill a vacancy, Kevin Tedesco of 34 Ireland Street for a per term period of 4 to 18 to 6 30 20. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? I believe it's an alternate. It's an alternate appointment. Okay, thank you, Dolores. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays, any abstentions? Motion passes. Next, we have an, um, a resolution for action. Do I have a motion? Yeah, um, motion to adopt a resolution supporting participation by the Town of Wethersfield in the S Sustainable Connecticut Municipal Certification Program. Second. Okay, Town Manager. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. As it says in the packet, this was kind of an evolution uh, out of a C C uh, Connecticut Conference of Municipalities kind of thought process, how to bring together eight or nine uh, descriptive elements to a community and outline what action steps uh, would be part of best management practices in those eight or nine steps. And that's really what the sustainable CT program is. It outlines best management practices as it relates to these nine uh, different categories, uh, such as you know thriving local economies, well stewarded land and natural resources, vibrant and creative cultural eco ecosystems, clean and diverse transportation systems, efficient physical infrastructure operations, strategic and inclusive public services, healthy, efficient, diverse housing, inclusive and equi equitable community impacts, and innovation. Action, and I'm sure a fabulous library is part of one of these criteria somewhere. Um, but it's kind of a best management practice. It's a way to engage our other boards and commissions as they relate to some things in the community and kind of not keep score, but kind of give, it's almost like a, not a strategic plan, but it's kind of set some goals, some things to work towards, and some recognition to be made when uh, some of these things are accomplished. So. Overall, it doesn't cost us anything. I think it may help focus some of our efforts in some of these categories and identify things that we should be doing uh, that we may not. Thank you. Um, are there any questions?
Any comments? Councillor Rowe. Uh, I think I read somewhere 13 municipalities are involved in it. Is it 13 regional Hartford region or 13 across the entire state? Uh, at the time Peter wrote the memo, there were 13. There's now over 30 okay. that have registered um, to be in the program. Okay. And, that, and tomorrow we would register to be in it and start the process. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything else? Great, I think it's a great initiative, no cost to the town and allows us to apply for grants or partnerships and it's showing what we've already do in some instances. Uh, thank you. So seeing no more questions, um, call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Anybody abstaining? Motion passes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving into other business, acceptance of an after school program grant. Do I have a motion? Motion to authorize the town manager to apply for and accept a Keene Foundation grant to support the intramural and tutoring program at the Silas D. Middle School for $11,000. $300 for the 2018-19 school year. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Town Manager. Um, I'm gonna ask Kathy Bagley, Director of Parks, Recreation, Social News Services and all of their duties as assigned <laughs> to uh, give, us, give us the 911 on this one, or 411, sorry. Good evening, Kathy, thank you. <laughs> Good correction Good there, Jeff. Sorry. <laughs> Good so evening. Um, this grant will be the third year that we're applying for an after-school grant for the Silas Dean Middle School to do um, our intramurals that would be four days a week and also our after school tutoring program. And this is a grant that uh, the Keene Foundation has seen fit to uh, give it to us for the past two years. So this is us applying for it for the third year. It's been very popular with the students. The intramurals have done very well. We do a fall, winter, and spring session and the after school tutoring uh, this year it expanded in the first year we did it just um, we did it after intramurals and the second year we did a pilot program where we also did it before intramurals so that there were some students that didn't take part in the intramurals but took part in the tutoring so this has been very popular we've worked with the school administration at the middle school. They're very supportive of this. Tutoring has been very helpful for the after school program and it's been a success all around. Thank you. Any questions? Councilor Forrest? You know, there's some, there are some decisions up here that are tough. This is not one of them. That's fantastic. It's for the good of all the things that are positive about this community. So fully supported and I hope that we can continue this pro these programs and continue to expand on some of the groundwork that we've already built. Thank you. Can I, can I add to that? Sure. Just to, thank you, Mayor. Just to add to Councillor Forrest, uh, just a big thank you to the continuous generosity of the Keene Foundation for funding this and all the other programs that they fund. <clears throat> thank you. Anything else? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a the approval of a sub a sub recipient uh, agreement. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. Councilor. Yeah, a motion to approve the agreement between the town of Weathersfield and the Weathersfield Housing Authority for the Small Cities Program. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Town Manager. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, at the last meeting, you approved a uh, series of resolutions related to the town's application to the state of Connecticut for a small cities grant to renovate some housing with the uh, Weatherfield Housing Authority. What this agreement does this evening, it determines the relationship between the town of Weathersfield and the housing authority as it relates to those funds and basically puts the onus of grant compliance on the housing authority and any costs on the housing authority. Thank you. Are there any questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, next, we have a purchase uh, for a fleet vehicles bid. Do I have a motion? Councillor Forrest? 
Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move to purchase and, and dispose of the vehicles requested using $30,000 from the CNEF Reserve Fund. Is there a second? Second. Okay. On asset, uh, Sally Katz, talk about these vehicles. I will say that the $30,000, and I think I wrote it up in here, we, at the end of fiscal 17, we put aside 30000 with the expectation to buy one car to replace the Cavalier. Now with that, all three have uh, passed beyond. Sally Katz, Director of Physical Services. What you have before you, um, years ago, we purchased, used a number of um, Cavaliers. They have, over the years, uh, had to go out of service. This year, we actually had to take two of them out of service. Uh, these are cars that have a model year of 2002, which it's crazy, but that's 16 years. And they have literally rotted out. Um, we have been the stewards of them that have made them last this long, but we're not miracle workers, and we did have to take them off, uh, off the road. Um, we looked at a number of different options. Um, we tried to find additional um, natural gas vehicles we were unable to. We, were, we looked at state bids for a number of different brands of cars, um, and they all came out at more expensive. I looked at six or seven different um, used car vehicle uh, dealers. Um, I was finally able to work with one Ford dealer, the majority of our fleet are Ford vehicles, so it is better for us, if possible, to be able to, to purchase Ford vehicles, although we, I did look at a number of different brands. And so um, after a number of weeks of research and talking with different um, uh, dealers, what you have in front of you is what we found. These vehicles are vital to the job performance of the people who are in the building department who do uh, the historic district commission work, who uh, do the um, work for the engineering department. We need to go out, we need to look at the projects that we're working on. We need to be able to have eyes on the ground, and boots, uh, eyes in the air and boots on the ground for this type of work. Same thing with the building department. These people need to be able to go out to job sites to check that work is being done properly and in accordance with our rules and, rules and regulations. Uh, these vehicles will be used, as I said, in departments that they don't sit behind a desk all the time. They have to be out in the field. We have to be able to get them from here out into the field and to be able to do it safely. Thank you for being here tonight, Sally. Um, it, when awarding this bid, how soon will these vehicles be delivered? Tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was fast. <laughs> um, are there any other questions or comments? Okay. Councilor Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, through you to uh, Ms. Katz. Um, as we, I don't know, was there any consideration for electric vehicles in this particular field? Mm -hmm. I looked at electric vehicles. They are still currently very expensive and far um, surpassed what we had available as a working budget for this project. We also, it's right now in town, do not have an, an electric charging station. And um, so at this point, it doesn't make fiscal sense to, to do it because of the fact that the vehicles are still, the price point for them are still um, $35,000, $40,000, which puts it right now in a, out of our budget. What, um, what does the future just generally look like as far as replacement of vehicles? Uh, are we looking at like one in the... You know, for the next five years or two or after this after this transaction oh, gets made. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. Sorry, Mayor. No, that's fine. Uh, if I may. Yes. The uh, a majority of the fleet we've purchased for this type of operation were natural gas vehicles. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have about a half dozen natural gas vehicles, three Hondas, a couple transits, and a van that take natural gas. So probably as we evolve, we're going to have to look at an EV station. Sure. And that whether or not it replaces the natural gas station is something we're going to have to look at and see what, how we're going to plan the future of this fleet. Mm -hmm. But once we buy these two, we'll probably have to take uh, an old PD car to make up the other th one. Or we're going to have to look at when do the, the lifespan of these natural gas vehicles kind of abate and then plan for an EV station and somehow fund that. Um, the, the, what made the Cavaliers somewhat unique is they were dual, dual fuel. They took natural gas or unleaded, so it was kind of a neat thing to have them. Right. Yeah. 
So as you move forward, just and you're looking at the fleet and how to you know how to look at your our fleet and how it's replaced, but mm -hmm. it seems like the electric cars are running about 30 to 40 percent of the fuel costs, um, which is a huge reduction just mm -hmm. as a percentage. And then also the maintenance is looking to be tremendously less. Mm -hmm. uh, so it might be something for the future. I understand it's not going to change our vote here today, but since we're talking about fleet vehicles and replacing them, it seemed to be a good start of that particular conversation. And mm -hmm. At least for the time I'm here and we move forward, I'll be right. looking forward to that, whatever planning that you kind of come up with. Long term, that's where we need to go. Right. It's absolutely where we need to go. It's just that at this point, with this critical situation, even trying to look at it, we did. We looked at electric vehicles, natural gas vehicles, sure. hybrid vehicles, everything that we could. Um, and these are pretty f uh, fuel efficient in city driving. And that's the other thing that we... Uh, predominantly use these cars for so we tried to find something that had a better city miles per gallon than some of the other vehicles these are smaller cars these are not large SUVs and so we are cognizant of that also thank you any other questions Councillor Spinella Th this may be a question for the town manager is there <clears throat> has anybody ever looked at just uh, giving people mileage money and letting them use their own cars not recently. Um, I think a lot of employees are reluctant to use their own cars. We've had uh, where, you know, particularly I think five years ago, we had the assessors uh, driving a town vehicle, but they were T-boned in a town car. Uh, and I think there's not a lot of uh, desire to put their own vehicles out there. Also, with the amount of um, the fuel costs and other things, the mileage, comes out to where it's more cost effective in many cases for us to be able to use the vehicles. I do know that the health district used to use a town car, but now they're, they're health ins the inspectors for the health district are using their own and they're giving them uh, mileage. Any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we have replacement of the rooftop HVAC unit. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to accept the quote from Countrywide Mechanical Services for the replacement of the rooftop <coughs> unit at Charles Wright Elementary School for $12,500 with $1,875 contingency funds to come from the Silestine Air Handler Project. Second. Okay. Our manager. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Fred Bushy with the Board of Ed is here this evening to uh, <coughs> review this with you. Thank you. I will say the reason we're picking the uh, Silas Dean air handling unit, there was a project um, that we put about sixty to $65,000 in a few years ago. The real number for that project is about 250000 So we've kept that money in place and used it for things like security enhancements, and other improvements in the building, knowing full well at some point we're going to have to replace that air handling unit at Silas Dean for over two hundred thousand dollars. Correct. Okay. Uh, this the the air handling unit that uh, needs to be replaced is uh, uh, approximately twenty years old. Uh, parts are no longer available for this unit. The uh, Connecticut Natural Gas red tag the the heating side of it. Uh, I can no longer get the uh, 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 the heat exchanger that's in there. What we did the last time with this unit was to take it out, uh, re-weld it, and place it back. And it's the same thing with the, the uh, air conditioning coil side of it. Uh, parts are just no longer available. It's an R12 unit, which is uh, uh, with Freon, which is no longer made. Uh, we can get it. It's extremely expensive, and it's just more cost effective to replace this unit. I solicited three quotes for this. Uh, Countrywide came in at 12.5. Um, I am carrying a little bit of a higher contingency than I normally would. Uh, I, I normally go around between seven, eight percent, something like that. But I do not know what's going to happen once we pull this unit off of the roof. Uh, I don't know what's there. We cannot see what's there from down below. We cannot see what's up there from from up the top. Uh, obviously, if the if the contingency contingency is not used 
then uh, it'll be returned back to uh, uh, back to capital improvement fund. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on this, Councillor Hurley? Um, a couple questions. Do they do the work of taking apart the other one and taking it off? Yeah, the roof? A, a, a complete removal, uh, Mr. Hurley. And then when would this be put in? Within a couple weeks? Well, we're going to try to get it. Uh, I, I'm really striving for vacation week uh, uh, to get this done. The unit itself is uh, approximately a week out in checking with, uh, uh, with Carrier. Um, hopefully we can get it delivered on time to get it done during the vacation week. It, it's, it's approximately about two days' work once we get mobilized there with a crane. Uh, obviously, if we're going to swing a crane over the building, I won't allow cranes swinging over the building while, while the children are in, in the building. So it would either have to be done during a vacation week or on an after-school basis after 3 o'clock. Uh, I've checked with our local officials about this, and, and Mr. Latarulo and, and uh, um, Mr. Dignati said they would, you know, come out and have a look at it to make sure everything was safe uh, about doing this if we had to resort to that. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Deputy Mayor? Uh, Fred, do we have any other air handling units with this old type, type free on it? And if so, do you know? Uh, yes, we do. At, at, and actually at Charles Wright, uh, Mr. Martino, there are, there's, let me see, I think, I think, I believe there's four that still have that, pro, still have that, that original uh, um, R12, R12 and R22 uh, Freon in them. Uh, they're still working. They they still run. We can still charge them a little bit because we do have canisters of that. Uh, my uh, uh, if we don't have it, my vendor does have uh, on hand. Uh, but once things start to break down and we have to evacuate the gases, not a good process to to have that even you know to go out into the atmosphere. Is that but the yet, only school we have it at, or are there some other schools? Uh, that's. Emerson Williams is is um, uh, got some no R12 but R22 units. Uh, I believe there's at least four of them there that uh, uh, are, are in a similar situation. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Councillor Rell? Thank you, Fred. Uh, are these or is this unit more energy efficient than the ones the other four that are out there right oh, now? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. The sear, the, sear, the sear rating on the air conditioning side is up, up upwards of almost 18, where the the uh, uh, the unit now that's up there, if it's 10, we're lucky that we're getting that much out of it. And on the heating on the heating side of it, uh, there, these uh, the, these heat exchangers are, are squeezed down so far that they they you know run on a bare minimum of gas. Okay. So we could, in fact, see a. A little bit of a savings out of them, probably. We wouldn't, wouldn't see it because of you know other uses, but it's definitely not. You know, we're not putting money into an old I don't, bunker. And I don't think you're really going to see something on the, on the bill, uh, Mr. Rell, But you will. Uh, um, uh, the, how it's going to be noticed is is going to be within the uh, the classroom space, the uh, uh, the spaces that it actually serves. In okay. the, you know, within the building. Great. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you, folks. Thank you. I may. Fred, visit with us in the morning. We'll get you the PO. So you I'm get sorry? This, visit with us in the morning. We'll get you the PO so you can get this thing ordered. Very good. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Next, we have the minutes of March 19th. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Are there any um, changes to the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Motion passes. Um, finally, we have public comment. Members of the public um, may speak for five minutes on any topic. Do I have anybody from the public who would like to speak tonight? Mr. Colantonio?
Good evening. Gascol Antonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. And tonight is not going to be about the stop sign. I give you guys a break. <laughs> uh, you know, in my past time, I catch squirrels and I relocated them. And I relocated them closer to the river off of the, I guess, I-91 northbound off-ramp in the vicinity of uh, Meadow Road. And this was on um, Tuesday, I guess, Monday or Tuesday, last week. And uh, I was really surprised. At the end of the ramp, on the north side of that road, next to the Kirby, for about 100 feet by two feet wide, there was rock salt. Somebody dumped rock salt. I brought it up to the police department, and they say that they were going to look into it. It's kind of crazy. I do not understand. It seems to me that rock salt costs money. But on top of that, it's not the money itself. But you know, rock salt closer to the river, it eventually washes out there. It's not a, it's a safety concern, it seems to me. You know, it's a pollution. So, and I, and I talked with uh, Mr. Metley, you know, a uh, uh, police officer, I guess, you know, and he was gonna take a look into it, but, uh, uh, and I don't know how much has been done because I went there yesterday again. And of course, as it rains and whatnot, you know, and with the time too, it disappears. But the rock salt was still there. I mean, who could use it? I mean, it could be a private contractor, but that costs money. Is the town uh, sends uh, trucks to put uh, this, this salt on the road and then they have a quota to put down or what? I don't know. It was disturbing, and I'm just reporting it for whatever reason, okay? So, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Colantonio, can you tell us again where it was? Exactly where it was, please. We'll have the town manager look into it. Do I have to go back Yes, so we can hear you. <laughs> At the I-91 northbound off-ramp, right there opposite, like, you know, once you get to the, the ramp at the end of like the ramp. Like Mar by Marsh Street? Marsh Street. Oh, well, okay. But I think it's, uh, it's like, you know, it's called another street there, though. As you go there, Marsh Street, and then it goes but to. But it's that exit. Right, that exit. Okay. The off-ramp on 91. And there was a lot of rock salt. So, you know, I was not going to say anything, but I said, wait a minute, you know. Somebody should also know. And Whitney or Mitney? Mitney. Mitney, the officer. I talked with him last week. Some, and he was going to take care of it for whatever. I don't know what it means he was going to take care of it. Okay. We'll take a look. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak tonight? Mr. Mazzarella? Thank you. Good evening. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, the town manager for putting his uh, multi-page uh, budget up online for everybody to view. Uh, I'll take advantage of that. And I would ask that you uh, ask your counterparts over at the Board of Education to do likewise. Uh, the budget presentation tonight, the uh, snapshot of it anyways, Looks like the town, on the town side, uh, uh, they're making uh, every effort they can to try and keep those numbers as low as possible, and I appreciate that. But on the Board of Ed side, it's just a big, big hole that we don't really know what's going on over there. We're just presented with a, an increase, and I understand the legalities where you're not a, allowed to line by line cut or adjust their budget, uh, but I'd like to see uh, some pressure put on the Board of Ed from the Town Council to try and work equally as hard to reduce their spending. Uh, I'm really <coughs> disturbed that, you know, we're going to breach that 40 mil rate and, you know, maybe it's semantics, but it's just, uh, it's troubling to be in one of the towns that's going to pass that mark 
Uh, I think it sends the wrong message to potential uh, businesses that want to move to town as well as uh, people seeking a place to raise their family. Uh, you know, if you have a choice of uh, 41 mills or 37, I mean 37, you know, looks better. Um, I also, I realize this is not a question and answer, but I'd like uh, if we could hear what the um, minimum budget requirement number is for the Board of Ed uh, at, next, at the next presentation. Um, because the numbers changed, I'm not sure which number is the, is the minimum budget requirement for uh, education spending. And I also wanted to just compliment uh, Sally Katz and the physical services for getting 16 years out of a couple of vehicles. And, uh, you know, that's, that's getting your money's worth. And I'd like to see, if possible, if we could take another look at, at the master plan for vehicles. I understand you have a, you, you target a seven year replacement for certain vehicles, maybe p just police vehicles, I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, I think if something's well maintained, I think you can stretch these vehicles out to uh, get more life out of them. And it's nice to see a fleet of vehicles that, you know, with the town logo on them and they're bright and shiny and new. Um, but I don't think, you know, maybe 16 years is pushing it, but, you know, 10 is definitely obtainable. And uh, that might help to reduce some of our spending. And I'd like to see... Uh, a better presentation when we do replace a vehicle. There seems to be this uh, catch-all that it's exceeded its useful life and the cost of maintenance is increasing. Um, you know, these things can be tracked. Uh, you can have a, an ongoing log. Uh, how many hours did our mechanics have to invest in each vehicle? What were the parts costs? Uh, what are these expensive repairs? I mean, you know, one of the vehicles had, you know, expensive brake repairs. Well, that's just routine maintenance. You know, you, you, can, you can do that. If you're talking about replacing engines and transmissions, well, then, yeah, you're probably at the point where you need to replace the vehicle. But I think we could do a better job of, uh, of gathering all that information and really pinning down the cost of, of uh, vehicles before we make the decision to replace them rather than to just say, well, it's seven years and we should try to replace the vehicles to, to maintain the integrity of the fleet. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Yes, come on up. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carol Hazlett and I'm at 141 Mill Street. Just two things, one thing in particular, um, we actually just closed on our home last month, so I'm brand new to the Wethersfield area. I've never attended a town council meeting, but one term that was used a lot today was civic engagement. And I myself, I, I enjoy volunteering and I really look forward to being a part of the Wethersfield community. So thank you. And a second thing is that on Mill Street, there has been, as many of you know probably, a lot of construction. And um, I'm excited about different development that's moving forward in Wethersfield. And also being new to owning a home and not just renting, I don't know who to contact in terms of um, some of the vehicles have caused like grass to be kind of uprooted in the front. And um, it's not a major issue or anything. <laughs> I just don't know um, the proper way to go about that. So I figured I would bring that up, um, just so maybe I could get could get any answers. But thank you so much. Thank you, um, Mr. Manager. Do we still have town calendars and and um, yeah, books over there? On, yeah, okay. On the table. All right, Carol. You may want to get a town calendar and book over there. It, it has useful information for the town, um, including numbers to call for different issues that you may have in town. Um, and you can call the physical services if you have an issue with grass being um, grass or curbing. Uh, Mr. Young? Good evening again. Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Thank you. 
Um, after hearing the town manager talk about his budget, which was very brief, of course, uh, I, I wondered, you know, MDC is going to charge you 24% or 9%. I don't understand that issue, but uh, uh, towns do not pay taxes from what I understand. We citizens pay taxes. So if your water bill is going to go up 9%, our water bill is going to go up, tax included, it's going to be more because towns don't pay taxes. And if you think you're hurting, we're all going to be hurting worse. Now, I, I don't know how we're going to get around this, but uh, I, I, think, I think the only way is you're going to have to beat up the MDC, who is a very inefficient operation. They're extremely inefficient. I've followed some of their programs. And what I saw was ugly. Very expensive, what they do. But um, they need to be beat up terribly. Um, also, with, your, with, with the presentation, you had something like uh, a sentence. S uh, Central Health District increased $5,500 or some kind of number like that. It would be nice to say the current dollars that we're spending are this, and they're going to increase by this, and it's now going to be a new number. It just would be easier for people to read and understand quickly if we could get that into the verbiage. Tonight you, uh, uh, let's see, you voted on that, uh, whatever the heck that thing was. Uh, I forget the words, but uh, there's 13 of them, and now there's, the, now there's 30 of them that are registered. And all I could think of was... Uh, your fracking group, you had 30-some towns that were all joining the fracking issue. Must be the same people, my thoughts. Uh, tonight you spoke about automobiles. Mr. Forrest brought up a good subject about the, energy, the more uh, electric kind of a car or a car that uh, takes sun, you know, the sun, sunshine and, and turns it into something. I mean, you guys don't like fracking. You want nothing to do with it, that's the kind of car you should be buying. And our employees don't go out at night. They're all going out during the 8, eight o'clock to 5 o'clock. So it's, if they're running on electric uh, from the sun, you know, beams, uh, that, that works for them. And you would also be uh, being a little more responsible to your fracking ordinance. Uh, let's see. I was talking earlier about Harford and all the money that they're now going to gather from the rest of us. And the, the lousy Harford current comes out why it makes sense for the state to pay Harford's debts. What a joke these people are. Don't even want to read it. And then S&P could boost city's bond rating. Tonight you were talking about your own bond rating. And because of the big bailout, they could get a better rating just because of the game they played. Very good moves they made. And they took us all. They also took us, and they will take us. Harford to pay housing case, $6.25 million. Uh, because they were, uh, they just got fined from the court. We'll end up paying for that as well. The judge fines 1,700 households improperly displaced from condemned buildings, and the and the town of Weather, the town of Hartford, did wrong by them. And there's another 6.25 million that the rest of us are going to pay. This whole state of Connecticut is going to going to have to pick up a lot of Hartford's mistakes. There was an article that I read. It was downstate, the town of Shelton. The, the manager down there was bragging how for the last 10 years, this is going to be his 10th year that he's not going to increase his mill rate. I, 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 I was shocked when I read it. The guy was a real, his name was Loretti. Or, he, he's also running for governor. 
He sounds very interesting. I mean, he somehow brings business into his community. He keeps businesses there, and he, uh, he's able to maintain his mill rate for now 10 years. We've Thank never you, done Mr. That. Young. Can you yes, finish up, please? Yes, we've never done that, Mayor. You know, that would be a heck of a challenge. You know, start off reducing your mill rate to zero, and maybe even a little less. It would really help out a lot. And of course now, um, in the paper, it it's, it's talks about waiting to get paid. Uh, once again, Connecticut taxpayers work longer last year to pay their taxes than Americans in the other 49 states. They call it Tax Freedom Day when taxpayers begin working for themselves uh, after paying federal, state, and local taxes. And here in Connecticut, it's May 21st, 2007. After that, we're working for ourselves. Up until then, we've worked for the tax collector. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Okay, seeing none, I ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in, fa all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> That was my motion. It was taken away from me. <laughs> yeah, look the other way. This I made time. a note to put it back. It's all right. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I don't know. Councilor Rell was pretty quick on the uh, yeah, motion. It was. He's in a hurry. To get out of here. Hey, you uh, leaned in something. John Cass. No. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some Thank you. This is not paint. Thank you. Wanted to eat. Oh. Yeah. 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 Then he would want to. Have a good hey. one.